to immigration officers charged with selling visa extensions, a major undertaking at the Grand Bahama shipyard, and 37 Cuban nurses arrive in country. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Lissy Bastian with your JCN News for this Friday, October 27th. It's great having you with us. Three men, two of whom are immigration officers, were arraigned in the magistrate's court this morning, each charged with one count of bribery and one count of conspiracy to commit bribery. The charges relate to that immigration ring uncovered within the Department of Immigration. According to court records, Chief Immigration Officer Weiberg Brown, age 50, and Immigration Officer Thorne Curry, age 30, along with a 30-year-old Avery Francis, are said to have accepted bribes on Wednesday, October 11th, to extend the stays of three Jamaican females, Shakira Anderson, Sasha Burke, and Sasheen Thomas. The trio, while before Magistrate Shaka Seville, pleaded not guilty to the charges and granted bail in the sum of $4,000 with two sureties. Now on Thursday, Acting Press Secretary in the office of the Prime Minister, Kishler Adderley, told reporters that a ring of sorts was uncovered. She also noted that the officers were allegedly caught selling visa extensions to persons who entered the country as tourists. Earlier this month, a fourth person, 53-year-old Jamaican national Jennifer Ann McInnes, who is attached to this case, was also charged with the same offenses. She was granted bail in the sum of $7,000 with two shorters. The matter has been adjourned and all defendants are set to return to court on November 21st. Well, a 16-year-old minor will spend his first night on remand at the Simpson Penn School for Boys following his arraignment in the magistrate's court today, charged with murder. The teen is alleged to be the gunman behind the daylight shooting that occurred in the area of Market and Fleming Streets on October 16th. That incident claimed the life of 32-year-old Tiano de Haiti, a man who was previously known to police and was out on bail for murder and dangerous drugs. The teen was also charged with two counts of attempted murder, according to prosecutors, on Saturday, October 7th. While in the area of Kwaku Street, it is alleged that the troubled teen opened fire on two men, Ishmael Lowe and Torino Fisher, shooting one to the face and the other to the arm. The 16-year-old was not required to enter a plea due to the nature of the crimes. He was denied bail and ordered by Magistrate Algernon Allen, Jr. to be remanded to the Simpson Penn School for Boys. Now, should he breach this order, he will be remanded to the Bahamas Department of Corrections. He returns to court on February 28th next year for service of voluntary bill of indictment, which will fast-track his case to the Supreme Court. A $600 million project on tap for Grand Bahama, a major investment on the island through the Royal Caribbean Group and Carnival Corporation. The entity is pairing up for the expansion of the Grand Bahama shipyard in an effort to re-establish the area as the largest cruise port in the world. Destiny Johnson has more in this report. The Royal Caribbean Group and Carnival Corporation broke ground on a $600 million Grand Bahama shipyard expansion that will be re-established as the largest cruise repair facility in the world. Back in 2019, a crane collapsed in the shipyard causing extensive damage to the property's main dry dock and visible damage to the world's second largest cruise ship, Royal Caribbean's Oasis of the Sea. The incident also resulted in eight employees being injured. After the crane incident, Hurricane Dorian later damaged another one of the docks at the facility, further reducing its capacity. The multi-million dollar project includes construction, delivery to Freeport, and commissioning of two world-class floating docks that will allow the shipyard to service the entire range of cruise ships in operation and under construction, as well as much of the world's commercial shipping fleet. Prime Minister Philip Davis was the keynote speaker at the grand breaking ceremony Friday morning. 
He said the government's primary goal is to catalyze quality career paths for Grand Bahamians, which involves bringing in new jobs and rethinking our approach to employment. PM Davis says they are making progress with the ILO Decent Work Program as the government recognizes gaps in our legislation and is committed to bridging those gaps. The government is also proposing a new system for government workers where they will transition to full-time roles with all the attendant benefits. He thanks Grand Bahamians for their trust, resilience, and for being the cornerstone for this upcoming journey. Minister for Grand Bahama Ginger Moxie was also present at the ceremony. She says the new project will breathe life into Grand Bahama as the shipyard had been on the island for 25 years. The Carnival Cruise Line Celebration Key in East Grand Bahama will open in June 2025 and Minister Moxie says the government's redevelopment of the shipyard will enhance the global competitiveness of the Bahamas and solidify Grand Bahama as the home of maritime and logistics. She thanked Prime Minister Davis, executives from the shipyard and the Carnival and Royal Caribbean groups for the historic achievement and says Grand Bahama is finally seeing better days. For JCN News, I'm Destiny Johnson. Thanks for that report, Destiny. The Bahamas Investments Authority, BIA, has started the process to modernize the authority Director of Investments for the BIA, Felicia Woods Hanna, says the digitization of the department began with converting to paperless applications. Uh, we hope that as of December of 2023, we can stop the hard copies of the International Persons Land Holding Act applications. What this does is cut down the time from about two months for processing of investment board applications to about a week a week and a half, which is a, a great win for the facilitation department of the BIA. We have opened our USD and BSD accounts at the Bahamas Investment Authority. With that, we are now able to accept payments. The old process, you took an approval letter to the inland revenue and you had to get a receipt and bring it back to BIA for um, issuance of an investment board permit or an investment board certificate of registration. That process has since changed to allow for greater efficiency in the processing of applications as well as, you know, being more paperless and more energy efficient, I guess we can say. The BIA is also looking to revamp the national investment policy that was introduced in 1994. This policy was created to promote and facilitate investment in the country. Ms. Woods Hanna says stakeholder consultations are currently going on with all professional services as well as the financial services industry. We are currently, as we speak, having our first consultation with the financial services industry to see how we can cut down the turnaround time for financial services related applications as well as we're looking at the local capacity. We're trying to get an assessment of what local capacity exists within the country so that we can review the sectors that are under the national investment policy reserved for Bahamians and possibly expand that um, listing of industries reserved for Bahamians. We're also looking to see how we can make the ease of doing business in our country a reality instead of a sexy language that we use on a frequent basis without action. Bahamas Invest is also a part of BIA's revamp. Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper announced the new agency for investors in June of 2022, calling it the promotional arm for investment. And he said it will be a turnkey approach to investment, giving investors a dedicated liaison to walk their project through approvals that cuts through the red tape. The agency has not gotten off the ground since then. Ms. Woods Hanna says Bahamas Invest will be established following stakeholder consultations, which should be completed in the first quarter of 2024. You do not want to risk with the Bahamas introducing a new entity, no changes in the efficiency of the way we do business in the Bahamas. We're also looking to see what investment, the promotional arm, developing the promotional arm of the Bahamas Investment Authority. The national investment policy that establishes the BIA speaks to the BIA being a one-stop shop. But really and truly, we need to make sure that functions as that. The transition to Bahamas Invest is to do that. 
However, we must make sure that the legislative, the necessary policy and legislative reforms take place so that we don't re risk a rebrand without the general public and the global stage seeing a change in the way the Bahamas do business. So it is an initiative, it is something that is a part of this process that we're going undergoing with the digitization as well as the revamping of our policies and laws. She says consultations are necessary to ensure that we have a balance between the public sector and the private sector in whatever is introduced. 37 healthcare professionals from the Republic of Cuba arrived here in the capital this week as part of a recruitment of nurses aimed at bolstering the country's healthcare services. Recently, Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Michael Darville told reporters that nurses from Cuba and Ghana were being recruited to assist with the current medical staff shortage, particularly following an assessment that found that there is an extreme shortage in manpower and resources. The Ministry of Health in a statement noting that these skilled professionals, inclusive of X-ray technicians, physiotherapists, laboratory technicians, biomedical engineers, and epidemiologists will play key roles in enhancing health delivery services on New Providence and the Family Islands. The newly recruited health professionals will undergo a one-month orientation program to familiarize themselves with the Bahamian healthcare system. Now, this orientation period will ensure they are well prepared to provide optimal support in healthcare facilities across the country. Dr. Darwell says, with the healthcare workforce being the greatest asset of his ministry, ensuring that the human resource gaps are solved in the short, medium, and long term is a priority. He expressed appreciation for the continued partnership between the Bahamas' government and the government of the Republic of Cuba. Registration is closed for that by-election for West Grand Bahama and Bimini. The Parliamentary Commissioner released a statement this afternoon notifying the general public that a writ of election was issued today by Governor General Cynthia Pratt, paving the way for election in that constituency to take place. The West Grand Bahama and Bimini seat was left vacant due to the unexpected passing of its representative for almost 20 years, the late Obi Wilshkum. The by-election for the West Grand Bahama and Bimini constituency must now take place no less than 21 days and no more than 30 days after the writ has been issued, according to the Parliamentary Elections Act. Two major political parties in the country ratified candidates to be its standard bearers to contest the seat. The Progressive Liberal Party ratified former Chief Passport Officer Kingsley Smith, while the Free National Movement ratified Bishop Ricardo Grant, both of whom are residents of Grand Bahama. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us.